Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the Mecha Cup 1 pedal set from the guys at all for sim in the Czech Republic. An all stainless steel load cell pedal set that at first glance seems to do everything right. <laughs> Time to put them through the SRG's review process and see how they do. So, let's get to it. Now, as you guys probably know, I normally do not do unboxing videos, and this really isn't one either, but I do like to show unique packaging is a good word for it, I think, when I get a product that has that. And this is the first time I received a set of pedals that actually came like this. And of course, they have a nice heavy-duty cardboard box that's double boxed, and it made it pretty good, but there is a, a little ding over here. I don't know how well it's showing up on the video, but yeah, there is a little ding right here. Right, so let's go ahead and open this puppy up so you guys get an idea of what you can expect when you get your pedals very nicely done here with the sectioning off of each one of the pedals and let's go ahead and pull this cardboard out like that and there's our mecha pedal set so again very nicely done here and each one of these pedals is in their own little cutout and of course we've got some electronics and some accessories in here and we'll see all that in the closer look. But I just thought you guys might get a kick out of seeing how they actually package these things. Because I did. It was just something different. And again, when I notice something different, I like to show you guys that kind of stuff. So let's take a closer look at these Mecha Cup 1 pedals. First off, you can see they're all steel assemblies. I'll use the throttle as an example. And this is a high-grade stainless steel that they've used here. It's all laser cut, and then it's glass bead shot, right? So for smoothing, given the finish it has. And I really like the finish on this. It reminds me of some other pedal sets that I've had in here before that they just don't make them like this anymore. And yeah, very nice finish. It's kind of a matte finish on the front of the pedal. But on the sides, it's more of a... You can see, I actually see my finger reflecting in there a little bit. There it is, right? So yeah, this is a very nice finish on here. And there's no rough edges, really. Yeah, everything's been filed down to where there's no really... What I would call a rough edge and I would worry about cutting my finger on it. Of course, I've seen some pedals like that. And there's a lot of adjustments for the faces to go up and down. And of course, we also have the normal adjustments like in here, but we'll talk about all the adjustments later. All these pedals are rotating on bronze bushings, another big plus. Very nicely done there. And of course, they're load cell. So we have a load cell on the throttle brake and the clutch. And on the back here, we have these 3D printed housings that are protecting the wires that are coming off the load cells. Very nicely done with these cable gables in here like this. Really like that. Very nice professional look. And on the other end, we have a nice connector that will connect into the controller box where there is a amplifier board in there for the load cells. Right. The brakes <laughs> pedal is really unique looking. When I first saw it, I said, wow, that is really cool looking. And it's got these cups in it. See, they're kind of hollowed out this way, but solid on this side. And instead of just using washers, yeah, they're making these very nice little cups here. And that's to, to main, manage the expansion of these bumpers when you're pressing on the brake pedal so that they don't get too big. Yeah, first time I've seen that implemented, actually. And I'm not sure how effective really it is, is, is preserving the feel of the brake pedal when you get to a certain point. When you squish out of uh, one of these bumpers to a certain point, it gets all rounded, looking like a, a beer keg. Yeah, they, then it becomes, you know, the, the load cell can't read it as well as what you're doing for the pressure. Anyway, very nicely done again. Oh, and this one has a 100 kilogram load cell on it. And all these are high quality Mavin load cells. Can't really see it very well there, but let me get a closer look. I might see if I can get a better look at it. But yeah, nice Mavin, and it says 100 kilogram there. I think you can actually see that right in there. Right, now let's go over to the clutch. And instead of just a spring clutch, we've got something unique here too. It has this assembly on it here. You can see it's like a swing arm, but it has a cam shape to it. And of course we have a spring here on each either side and nicely done with some heat shrink there to keep anything from snagging in the springs. And we have a load cell on the bottom there, again with the same housing protecting everything. And yeah, this is kind of cool because they're actually taking into consideration you might want to feel like you're really pressing rather a clutch pedal. So you're pushing on it, and it's, and it's a lot of resistance at first, just like in a real clutch where you have the pressure plate and the springs in that pressure plate pushing back against you. And as you push past it, then it goes easy. 
and then we, when we actually lift that clutch plate off the actual clutch, then yeah, then it's, it's easy to hold it right there. But then when you let it go, it's gonna pop back because the springs are pushing back against you. <laughs> All right, so yeah, very, very unique design here. It's similar to some others I've seen, but then there's only so many ways that you can do this, I imagine, to make that feeling come out in the pedals. We have some nice slots in here for adjusting pedal rake or angle. And that goes up to like 18 degrees of movement there if you need it. So that means we could actually hang these upside down pretty easily and slide this pedal out so it presents itself like in a GT car or, well, the older GT cars anyway, would present themselves in some of the SCCA, like a circuit car or something like that that you race locally or in the local circuits. Right. So plenty of adjustments here. Uh, and it's all professionally done. I think the look here, the bronze bushings, um, we've got uh, some nice rod ends in here. We got one rod end on this end in the clutch, and then we got one in the front there. So rod ends everywhere. And of course, it's good to have rod ends because that will relieve the pressure. It will keep the pedal from binding up anywhere when you're actually using it and moving it around. And of course, the throttle has a rod end on it also. Now these pedals are adjustable, the fronts here, but we'll talk about that once we get to the adjustments part. And yeah, a full load cell stainless steel brake set. And again, we won't know how good they are as far as operation until I actually get it onto the rig and we're using it. So let's see what else we get with this pedal set. Let me move these back a little bit. And if you just order the pedal set normally, then you will get a set of bumpers. And we'll check out the ratings on these once we get to the brake pedal and doing the adjustments on it. We get lots of hardware here. And I believe this hardware is for the, actually comes with the base plate package, which I got. And if you just get the pedal package, you'll get the pedals. You'll get the usual thing. You got a USB cable here. Sands the uh, ferrite chokes, but I can fix that because I have some of my own. And we've got some mounting hardware here for mounting the pedals to the heel plate, and we'll talk about that later. We've got some, also some more nuts and things. So there's plenty of hardware here. And all this, by the way, is also stainless steel. And we've got some spacers here for the heel plate. And you get these spacers when you order that kit that the base plate will actually set on. Now I'm gonna bring the heel, oh, one more thing. When you get the pedal set, you get the brake pedal, they also ship you this very cool thing. Again, stainless steel on the back, and it's got this little contour to it, but it's got that, like a skateboard grip to it on the brake pedal. And you can see it's much larger than, or wider rather, than what you get on the normal pedal. Now, I'm actually gonna run this because I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how this feels under my foot. Being that big, being that wide and everything. Plus, it'll facilitate itself well for heel and toe, I would imagine. But anyway, you get that with this pedal set. All right. And you'll get this electronic box. And we'll talk about the base plate in a minute. Now, this is an interesting setup here. And this is a 3D printed box. You can see it's all, it's got the labels on it for clutch, brake, and throttle. And we've got the, the male parts that accept the female parts on the pedals in there. And of course, there's a, load cell amplifier circuit in here. It is a bonder board. I'll probably pull the cover off real quick just to show you guys what's inside of there. And this bracket that it's sitting on does not come with the regular, just the pedal set. This box will come with it, but easy enough to mount it somewhere. It's got some ears here that you could figure out how to mount it, or you could just put some Velcro on it and stick it on your chassis with Velcro. I've done that before and it worked pretty well, actually. All right, so yeah, this is for the base plate. Now let's take a look at that base plate. Now these Spacers over here are gonna, actually gonna go underneath it. Uh, the reason I save this for last, it's heavy. This is a heavy plate. It's a six mil, I believe it's six mil. Actually, this is eight millimeters thick. <laughs> eight millimeters thick stainless steel plate that's powder coated. And with a base plate built like this, I don't think you ever have to worry about it flexing on you. And this is very heavy. It comes in at 16 pounds and four ounces, or for everybody else, 7.370 kilos. So this is one heavy duty unit. And these spacers that you just saw are gonna sit underneath here, and then you'll run your M8 bolt through them. Let me put one here, and slide one on the other side, like that. So then we'll put our M8 bolt through there and attach it to a T-nut. I'll be using Profile as usual on, when I demonstrate these pedals and test them. And I'll be using Profile, so I'll be using an M8 uh, T-nut in the channels to grab that. 
and then yeah that's how you secure it and it gives you some spacing under there for the heads of the bolts that are going to be underneath now i really like the way they've done this and we'll see this again when we actually do the assembly but i'll just do it real quick just to give you guys an idea and st here's the thing with pedal trays and a lot of manufacturers miss this that when you put the pedal tray on something and then you mount your pedals to it there's really you got to get underneath it to be able to get to the nut or whatever it is or the bolt and loosen it so you can slide these things and utilize these grooves the way you want to and by the way these have some nice long slots in them so we can actually move them forwards or backwards of course i have this backwards and we can also move them in a lateral direction but they, they thought about this and this is what really i like about some of these things that i get it's people have thought about this problem and it's pretty simple to, to cure but yeah a lot of, this is the first time i've actually seen a manufacturer do this and that is with what we call a carriage bolt and that has a nice smooth end over here and inside of it it has a four-sided hex or not a hex but a four-sided square and that square will fit right into this channel like that and it won't turn but we're going to be mounting this from the bottom because this way we don't have to worry about getting to the bottom again so you mount that you put your pedal on top right and there's a washer that goes on here too but i'm just going to throw the acorn nut on there and we'll see this again when i'm actually building it and now you can tighten this down from the top so you just put a 10 mil wrench on or socket wherever you want and tighten and loosen it and then you can adjust it wherever you want and just tighten it back like that very cool that they thought this through enough to come up with a solution to make it very easy for the end user who buys their pedal set and this nice heavy duty uh, tray that the heel tray that they're going to be using here yeah it's it's great I'm, I'm, it's a little thing sometimes that matter the most <laughs> and, and impress me so yeah other manufacturers i've gotten these heel plates or heel trays in and yeah they don't even think that hey how are you going to adjust these things after you get them to a certain point and then you put this plate down on top of a rig and you bolt it down how are you going to get underneath here i mean you're going to have to have a pretty long wrench and this is a 10 mil wrench to get under there now you could probably get the the clutch pedal and a throttle pedal easy enough but when it comes to the brake pedal then you're doing all this trying to get to it yeah this is so much easier and again a well thought out system here and that's little cues like that will tell you that every time so let's go ahead and get this back off anything else i want to show you here there we go i think that's it now the the weight of the pedals themselves we can go over that real quick the let's see which one's first the throttle let's talk about throttle now again being stainless steel they do have a little bit of heft to them this throttle weighs in at two pounds and 13 ounces or 1.27 kilos now the brake as you might imagine is going to be a little bit heavier with all this these these type of things on there and of course we have the load cell on here it's just yeah a little bit heavier this one comes in at three pounds eight and a half ounces or 1.610 kilos all right and last but not least the clutch pedal this one will come in at two pounds and 15 ounces or 1.330 kilos so again pretty stiff hefty stuff it definitely has some heft when you hold it in your hand and that's what we like to see in a pedal set because when you're in in the heat of battle racing and you're stomping all over these pedals doing some heel and toe or something like that yeah you want something that's not going to flex and give you the feel and the tactile feedback you need to feel what these pedals are doing as you control your car right i think that's about it so what we'll do next is yeah we might as well just get into the actual adjustments of each individual pedal we'll look at the throttle pedal first as far as the adjustments available on it of course we have the pedal face here that is adjustable we can move it up and down i'm going to go ahead and pull this off and it's just two 2.5 millimeter screws here these are flathead screws so they sit nice and flat to the profile here and we'll go ahead and take the bottom one off first always do that because if you take the top one off first and then the bottom it wants to fall over on you so what we have back in the on this plate here now this this is a plate that actually adds some structural integrity to this whole lever and you can see it has tabs i can keep my wrenches from running away you can see it has tabs on that plate here and here and when we bolt this all together it squeezes that into these tabs into the side parts or these side levers it makes a nice tight tough stiff unit they've got these standoffs and they had these hex 
bolt shape to it. And these are, I believe, eight mil. Yeah, these are eight mils. And all you do is take these off if you want to move them up. And you can take this one off and put it in here, and that's the limit for the top. But you can take this one and actually move it up one or two to change that. Or you can just leave them where they are. And we still have, because we have so many holes in the pedal face itself, that we could actually move this. I'm looking at the holes here. That's the very limit right there. We can move it plus one more. We can actually get it that high. And I'm pretty sure no one would need it that high, but it sure is nice to know that all that adjustment is in there if you need it. So yeah, pretty simple to do that. And obviously if we're going to reinstall it, you just take your wrench and always put the top one in first. And we'll just screw it back into that little standoff. Take this one and back in its standoff. And there we go depending again where we want our pedal. And I'm not sure that's where I want it. I might want it a little higher because it was a little higher before I took it off. But again, we can do that once we get the pedal actually mounted and see where they address the sole of my foot when I'm putting it up against there. Right, we also have an adjustment here in this slot. And this is the main tension adjustment for the pedal, how hard it is to push. So when it's closer to the top, it's hard. And when it goes down to the bottom, it's much softer or easier, if you will. And we have a 10 millimeter nylock nut on one side, and we have a five millimeter hex stainless steel bolt on that side. Simple enough, you just put your wrench on there and loosen it up, going the right way with the wrench. Turn around that so you guys can see. I like these ratcheting wrenches so I can, well, that was tightening. I'll go back the other way. Okay, there we go. And now we loosen it and I should be able to move this up pretty easily and I can. So if I have it all the way to the top, it's definitely harder to push this thing. <laughs> now, if we put it all the way to the bottom, yeah, just one finger. So there's a good adjustment range there, I think, for the pressure to use on the pedal. Some people are gonna like, it, like your pedals stiffer to push. Some people want it very light. It all depends on the person. I usually start with it in the middle when, I'm, when I get a new set of pedals and then I'll go from there and, and see how the adjustments are going when I'm actually using it. So if it's too heavy or too tight at this point, then I'll just go ahead and lower it down. Or if it's not enough, then I can pick it back up. So it's hard to tell with your hand. You just have to get it underfoot. Another adjustment we have here, and this is pretty cool. For the pedal throw, it's pretty neat the way they've done this. There's a little screw in here, and you can see this copper. It looks like it's, it's off center, the hole in it. You can see how it's off-centered, right? So when we loosen this, we can actually turn this and adjust. See, when I push this down, that's about the longest throw right there, or close to it. So if I wanted to make that a shorter throw, then I would take this, and I believe this is a, yeah, it's a three. I'll take that three socket head cap and just loosen it up a bit, and then I can turn this around. And I'll turn it over to the max position, which I probably would never use, but... Here we go. Secure that back in, and there we go. Now my throw <laughs> is going to be much shorter. That's not much throw there at all, right? So yeah, you wouldn't want it that short, I would imagine, because you want to try to take as much advantage of this load cell as far as the pressure range as possible for your pedal modulation. Yeah. So we also have two more adjustments here. This is the spring adjustment, and this is kind of neat. They've printed a 3D nut here. So it's easy to get your finger on it and grip it and turn it one way or another. If you turn it clockwise, it tightens the spring. So it's a preload adjustment. So it just gives us a little bit of a stiffer spring. Or we can go counterclockwise and it'll loosen the spring up and make it easier. So again, this is a pretty good adjustment range for a throttle pedal. And last but not least, we have these two three millimeter screws here. Get the right wrench there, Barry. And we loosen those, and now we have a, get this one loose. We can actually change the rake of the pedal to address our foot better. You can see how that slides down. And this is typical what you'll see in these type of pedals, this, the way these are built or constructed, that, yeah, you have those kind of adjustments in them. Very cool. All right. So, yeah, I think that's about it for the throttle pedal. No adjustments needed for the, the load cell, obviously. We don't want to mess with any of that stuff. And yeah, so I guess we'll get on to the brake pedal.
Now we'll take a look at the adjustments that we have on the brake. And of course, the main adjustment here is going to be the bumpers, right? Now there is, the way this bumper stack works is there's a nylock bolt there on the back of this threaded rod. And it goes all the way through these bumpers and these cups. And then it goes into this spacer here, which then goes into the rod end. And to take this apart, we simply have to loosen this. And as we loosen it, it will come out of this rod end. Now I'm going to do this a little quicker with my 13 mil socket on my <laughs> little driver here. And I'll just go ahead and run that off. And you can see right here, or you should be able to see a little bit of that. You see that there's a thread in that rod end right there. So we're actually gonna pull this all the way out of the rod end. So let me go ahead and do that and carefully catch it. And when it comes all the way out, I think that's it. All right, so now that we have it out of the rod end, then we simply can pull this out. Now, when that happens, obviously, all of these are going to start falling off. So what I usually do is just kind of pull off a little bit at a time, see how we get it all the way down to this one, and we'll kind of just put these off to the side. And we'll take a look at this in just a second and continue doing it as much as I can grab, if you will. We'll put these over here. And we got one last one here that's, actually kind of stuck in here okay yeah there's a bushing in there. you can see it's this bottom piece here is actually pressed see the piece of it there coming through this stainless steel plate so that's actually pressed into there so it doesn't come out so you never lose it <laughs> right now let's go ahead and look how the assembly works and here's the rod and there's the threaded end on it of course that's going into the rod end over here and it has a bumper itself that makes it quiet, so it, when it slaps up against here when we're using the brake pedal, it doesn't make a lot of noise. All right. Now let's look at how the stack is looking. Now these are the, this is what I was thinking, is this is kind of unique the way he's done this. And these are aluminum cups, very well and nicely machined. You can see how shiny they are. Just really a nice looking set. It's the little details like this, again, that just, I like to see stuff like this, especially at the price point these pedals come in. You should see nothing less than something very, very nice on your rig. <laughs> and this is one of those things that does that. Now, the purposes of the cup, they tell me, is these bushings, obviously, as we press this bushing down, it starts to, it gets to a point where it starts to spread out. And these cups are, are supposed to keep that from spreading out too far to where it deforms them so much. Number one, it's going to wear them out quicker. Number two, uh, they were telling me there's something about once it gets to like that, really squished out and it looks like a beer keg that the load sensor it just doesn't it doesn't register it anymore because it's, it's flattened out to the max anyway so this keeps that from happening right and of course we have three of them then we end up with this nice aluminum spacer here and that's bumping up against the to the rod end itself once we have everything assembled simple enough and yeah Let's just go ahead and take a look at these bumpers now, because we always like to see what the bumpers are as far as their rating. And I believe they might have on their website what the rating for these bumpers. And we get some orange and blue ones. Let me get the run off here. And I'll take one of each. Yeah, the blues. I don't know. Let's see. We're going to have to wait. We're going to have to put the, the shore meter on these guys and see what they are. So let's just get an orange or blue together here and see what we have. All right. So I'm going to use my shore meter will register whether or not something is soft or hard. And we'll go with the black first. And I think you guys can see this. And let me go ahead and push down on that. And my mat here doesn't matter as far as the durometer because it's sitting on a hard cutting board and then a wood piece of wood. So shouldn't affect it that much. Now this is 71, it looks like to me. All right. So 71, 70 there. Let's see. Oh, there we go. You know, it depends on where we get it. I'm going to make sure I get it right on the center of that piece there. That's more like it. 71, 72. So the orange one comes in at, let's see here. Ooh, that's, that's hard. <laughs> that's like 93. I hit it a couple more times here. 91. Yeah, 92, 93. I would call this a 92. Well, that's a, that's a big difference than that black one. And the blue one, this one comes out to be, Okay, so that's the last 87. Let's try a couple other places here. Yeah, that looks like about 87, 88. 
Yeah, it's pretty, well, there's 86 and a half. So I would call this an 87. So soft, harder, and hardest. <laughs> now, when we create a stack on these, let's say you want to use like the blue ones and the black ones, and you want to mix them up a little bit. Because, and that's very common. You see that a lot in, in these kind of breaks that use these bumpers. Because it's a progressive feel when you do that. If you have them all the same durometer, then it's like you hit them and it, it, you can still move them and squish them, but it doesn't have like any, like it gets harder as you keep pressing it. And if you stack like a, and use an example here, a black, a blue, and an orange one together, then the black one's going to deform before the blue one does. It squishes before the blue one does. And then, of course, the blue one's going to squish before this orange one ever does. So you get like a, a, a progressive feel of that brake pressure as you're pushing it, which some people like, some people don't like. Again, this is all subjective at the end of the day. What's important is that we have a brake pedal with enough adjustment in it that we can get a feel of what the car is doing. And being able to press the brake pedal and feel in the steering wheel, if you have a, a force feedback steering wheel, feel what's going on at the same time you're pressing on the brake pedal and what you're seeing on the screen or in your, your VR goggles, whatever the case may be, so that you can identify what the car is doing as you're using the brake pedal and, and make you feel like you're hard on the brake on the corner entry and then you're pulling back off and doing a little bit of trail braking as you're going, you know, the car starts to turn or rotate so you get more grip in your front tires and you can make that turn. So again, it's not an easy thing to do really. I, I, I've been... I found one brake pedal combination <laughs> that really is makes it feel like that for me. Now, of course, we don't have to have it like that. We can drive fine without it, but uh, because you know muscle memory and things like that, you know, takes over. But yeah, it's nice when you you feel like you're really braking the car, and and the car's reacting exactly how your foot is, is as far as the pressure is on it. And it's not an easy thing to dial into. Uh, for me anyway, maybe for other people it is, but muscle memory also gets you there so you don't have to be perfect with it and you can still be very, very consistent. And that's what these load cell brakes and pressure type of brakes like a hydraulic are all based on is pressure. So yeah, it's easy to remember where the pressure is than it is where your foot position is. Although I've seen some guys do some very good braking, consistent braking using potentiometer, potentiometers this, you know, like on a Logitech or a Thrustmaster pedal set. So there you go. Anyway, so yeah, very simple to change this. You know, you can just use a 13 mil wrench if you want to get that nut off. But of course, I try to make things happen a little faster here. I'm not sure where I'm going to be on these bumpers. Uh, I'm going to have to try them a little bit, you know, different settings once I have them mounted. And yeah, then I'll be able to tell where I need to be. But yeah, easy enough to do. And I'm glad they give us three different durometers and of course we can mix and match within there so i think most people should be able to find something that they like and they feel like they're actually controlling the car's brakes when they're in their simulator or game and doing your racing so yeah we'll go ahead and get to the clutch pedal next now let's look at the clutch pedal adjustments which by the way there's only a couple <laughs> so we have the angle adjustment just like all the rest of the pedals and we also have an adjustment here and of course, this is gonna make it easier or harder to push this clutch pedal down. And it's just a matter of loosening the 10 millimeter nylock nut over here and the five millimeter socket head stainless cap bolt that we're, they're using. And if we move it up, it's, it's gonna be harder to push. And if we move it down, it's gonna be easier. So that's really the only adjustment because you can't replace it. Well, I suppose you could replace the springs if you really wanted to test some different springs, but yeah, I probably wouldn't think that many people would be messing with that. So yeah, then not much else as far as the adjustment goes on the clutch pedal. Not a lot to talk about here. So yeah, um, we'll just go ahead and now that we've actually seen the adjustments on all the pedals now at this point, then we will pull the base plate out and mount these pedals to the base plate. And again, look at how that assembly works. I wanted to show you guys the inside of the controller box and it is a 3D printed unit as you saw in the closer look if you watched that part. And I've already taken the top off. It was just for these Phillips head sheet metal looking screws. You got a little Phillips head on it there. The aggressive sheet metal type of groove in there for plastics. And we can see it says brake, clutch, and throttle. So that's kind of nice. I know some boxes you get never even label them. So it's, you kind of figure it out though. But yeah, easy enough to figure out with this. And we've got some ventilation holes in the cover too. And there's the other side of it. You can see the 3D printed pattern. 
And inside, we have a very nice and tidy wiring job here. Very well done. I like the way they're using this glue here to keep everything nice and tight so it won't vibrate loose if you're in a motion rig or something like that. They're using a Bodner board, and I think you can see that. Where's my little pointer here? I think you can see that if I can get it to focus. There it is. Whoops, upside down. Let me turn it the other way. There we go. LC, load cell USB, and you guys can see it says Leo Bodner down there. All right. Again, top of the line electronics. Everybody uses these boards if they just want their, want their kit to last and not have any problems. Right. Now, also, this is mounted to that stainless steel bracket that we're going to put on the back of our heel plate because we got the heel plate option with our pedals. That's why it looks that way. But again, nothing to complain about here. This is all very nicely done here. The cable gables. Yeah, everything is just great. Okay, so what we'll do now is get to mounting the pedals on that pedal plate. Now we're ready to mount our pedals to our base plate. This massive base plate, <laughs> this is one heavy duty base plate. That's why I needed some big wood to get it up in the air. Plus, I thought this was the best way to put the pedals on and then you can get underneath with the bolts that we need to put on to attach them with. And we'll use the brake as an example and then I'll just go ahead and put the rest on it and show you the results. And I did put this, <laughs> this honking big brake pedal <laughs> face on here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this or not. And it has a very abrasive texture to it and it's going to be hard on your shoes. You certainly want to do this in socks. But you can also get a heat gun and take that off if you don't like the abrasive part of it. But I thought I'd give it a try. Why not? I mean, it's there, right? <laughs> so what we're going to use on the hardware here is this large powder-coated base plate. It has these slots in it. And these slots are, are just wide enough to facilitate our carriage bolts that we're going to be using on here. And the carriage bolt is one of these things. It has that flat button. There's no way to get a wrench or anything on that or a screwdriver. And, but inside of it, underneath, it has a four-sided pattern like a nut on there. All right. Now, this will fit directly into these slots. And then it won't turn because of that nut sitting underneath it. So we're not going to be putting it on like that, obviously. We're going to actually be putting it on from underneath. And then we, once we do that, we'll be putting a 6 mil washer because this is an M6 thread. A 6 mil washer on top of that and these cool acorn nets that they gave us. At least that's what I call them, acorn nuts. And they have that sealed top on them. So when it's sitting on top of your pedal, it's going to look a lot better than just an open thread. Very nice that they, it's, you know, it's the little touches like this that, that really separate manufacturers, some manufacturers from others. But anyway, very nice setup. And yeah, without further ado, we just go ahead and put this brake pedal on here. And I will come from underneath with the carriage head bolt and make sure it's seated into that slot, right? Really easy stuff to do here. And then I'll go ahead and put the top, the little acorn nut on there. I'll just tighten it up with my fingers. And there you go. Now we'll be able to loosen this up just with a couple of turns or barely that. And then I'll be able to still move my pedals back and forth, front to the back, and also in the lateral direction and fine tune this. Now, I'm probably... Some people are going to say, Barry, you're making a big deal out of those carriage bolts. But here's the thing. There's a lot of base plates out there from manufacturers, well-known manufacturers, that don't facilitate for that. They just got a regular socket head cap bolt going through and then maybe a nylock type of nut on the bottom with some washers. But once this is mounted flat on something or very, or very close to flat, it's very hard to get a wrench under there to grab that nut underneath and then loosen things so you can move things around. And it makes it very difficult to do that. This is a great solution to that. And I'm just wondering why more manufacturers don't think of this kind of stuff. And yeah, this is, this is one of the things that, you know, I admire when a manufacturer does, goes to those links to make it easy for people to adjust things. Right. So what we'll do next is go ahead and I'll just go ahead and put the rest of these pedals on. And then when we come back, we'll see what that looks like before I take it over to the, my rig over there and mount it to the profiles. Now we have the pedals mounted to this Again, I keep saying it, but this is a massive, massive base plate. <laughs> and the cool thing is, when you have these mounted just sitting here like this, it's like you already have them mounted to a rig. That's, that's how they feel when you're pushing on them. I mean, it's just solid as a rock. You know what they say, a tree is only as strong as its roots. Well, I tell you what, this pedal sets roots if you get this, this, this base plate. 
Yeah, it's going to be very, very strong. It's just massive and, and so dense and heavy. Everything just feels really good. Now, if you also notice, I've already put on the control box or with the Bodner board in it for the uh, conversion of this analog to digital for our load cells. And yeah, got everything screwed in there, all the connections made. And this, again, the bracket slips right under there. See how I have that mounted? Again, very nice the way this is done. And if you need to, you can actually slide the bracket back and forth for whatever reasons for your mounting situation or something like that. So yeah, really coming together really nice. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this. This is really coming together nice. I hope the pedals perform as well as everything is going together here. And remember, I have these spacers that I, I'll be using. And the reason we're using the spacers is because of the bend in this heel plate. If I pick this up and put them under there, Let's see, got one there. I'll put one over here. Oh, this showing up okay. And you can see that gives me clearance under here for whatever platform that I'm mounting into. And of course, we'll take these two and put them in the back. Now, they do supply you with these nice stainless steel flathead bolts. And again, these are M8s. So they will fit my M8 T nuts that I'll be using on my profile. So that'll just go in there just like that. The only thing is, I, I just hope it's long enough to go through this. I'm pretty sure it is. So we have to go through the plate here. And of course, let me just go ahead and hang this off to the side and see what that looks like. You guys can still see that. See? Yeah. So this is going to sit in there nice and flat out of the way like that. And then we'll have the spacer underneath like that. And then hopefully it's long enough. I was looking at it. It looks... And it'll probably make it. I don't know. I'm always thinking, well, it's not going to make it. <laughs> but uh, if I have a problem, then obviously there's no no way to avoid that. It's a, maybe I could lay this flat down, completely flat down on the platform, or hang it off. Uh, because I'm using Profile, I can actually have the Profile sitting back here. I'm using a 40 series. In fact, I can see if that'll work right now. Yep. So if I'm setting this on a 40 series Profile like I will be, I can actually hang the lip. Let me get this out of the way hang this lip over the profile itself so it actually come down lower and not even use the spacers. So I might not even be using these. So different ways to do different things. But then again, that would probably make the bolt too long. <laughs> so I'm just thinking out loud here, different ways to get this done. Like I always do. All right. So that's it. We're ready to mount this puppy. So what we'll do, what we'll do next is obviously go over and mount it. And then I'll come back and show you guys how that ended up. I have the Cup 1 pedals mounted now, and they're sitting on their massive 16-pound, 8-millimeter thick stainless steel plate. And it attached to the, you know, I've got the spacers on there, you can see those, attached to the 40 series profile, and went into a regular spring roll-in T-nut with no problem with about two turns. I would like to see those bolts maybe a little bit longer, maybe about 5 mil longer. So I could get maybe a couple more turns on it, even though I didn't experience any issues because I've been using this pedal set for a while now. It's just one of those things that when I'm thinking, you know, all the time when I'm building something or taking something apart, yeah, maybe just a little bit more here. It would make me feel a little better about it. But, you know, it does the job. So, you know, I can't complain as far as any failures go. We have the, what is it? The black, the blue, and the orange. Yeah, that's what I ended up with for my bumper configuration. I tried two blacks and a blue and a couple other things, and I just ended up with this. And of course, that's all subjective. You know, everybody's a little different what they want. The clutch, there's no adjustment there except for the stiffness of it by raising the bar, and I just kind of went with it right out of the box. It felt okay to me, especially doing my heel and toe. And the throttle cam down here where it allows us to adjust the throttle throw is set almost to the closest position for maximum pedal throw, but just a little bit off. And that's where I kind of ended up with it and really liked the way it felt. Speaking of feeling, and then we'll talk about that in the driving segment, this pedal tray, or not the pedal tray, but the heel plate or heel tray really is massive. And as you know, if, you, if I just said it, about 16 pounds. And what that does, though, is, and I wish more manufacturers would understand this and get this, that you have to have a substantial mounting surface for your pedals if you want to drive aggressively and just, you know, get the best out of the pedals you can. This is a great feeling set of pedals, but they're even greater set of feeling pedals because we're on a, a plate now. This piece of stainless steel has no flex whatsoever. It's just a big dead plate. I mean, when you mount something to it and that enhances the feel you get from the pedals. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later, but we'll go around to the front here. And currently I have set up with the 
regular pad that came with them out of the box, the narrow one, but I also ran the, and you'll see that in the driving segment, the fat pedal, and we'll talk a little bit about that there too. Uh, the fat pedal's a little bit too big for, at least for me, for doing heel and toe. It just kind of gets in the way. You need a, a, you know, a little bit closer gap between the pedals and not so much of space uh, sticking out on the sides. It just kind of gets in the way, basically. But we'll talk about more about that later. But yeah, there they are. They're mounted, and yeah, everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and get into the driving segment. Here we are in iRacing in the Lotus 79, and that's a formula car back from 1979. And we are at the Sebring circuit as usual and doing some heel and toe exercise here. Now, you don't have to use a clutch on the upshifts on this transmission in this car, but I just do it just to keep in practice for other cars that I drive that I do need to do that. Right, so right off the bat, I like to test a pedal set in this type of configuration where I'm banging on it pretty good with the heel and toe and I'm not taking it easy on these pedals I got my racing shoes on now so yeah you know I'm just letting them have it as much as I can just to see how they react and I have to say I, I came up to speed really quick with these pedals on the heel and toe it's just one of those pedal sets that is so consistent the feel is like familiar right away almost because the stainless steel all stainless steel body here is very stiff and but uh, still pliable enough so it's not like stomping on you know, a rock or something, obviously. And the stiffness is enhanced by this huge eight millimeter thick stainless steel plate that they're mounted to. I mean, this whole, this whole setup here comes together to really give you a solid, consistent feel. It was like uh, I had a familiar set of pedals under my feet right away. I mean, I, I just started shifting right away and, and just going, wow, this thing is, you know, everything's right where it needed to be. and like I said, I didn't have too many complaints with these pedals uh, coming coming out of the out of the gate here. Um, the bumpers that you see here, I'm running two blacks and a blue, which is really too soft, and I actually changed it uh, after I shot this video. I went with a black, blue, and the red or orange one, which stiffened it up a bit and made it feel a little bit better. But then that's totally subjective, so it really doesn't, you know, it's not really uh, affecting me one way or another, just from the feel that I prefer. I could still break fine with it the way it was. But yeah, this is um, this combined with this pedal plate. Now, I didn't run them without the pedal plate or the pedal tray, whatever you want to call it, this mount that they're using. But yeah, this really comes together as a package that is just very consistent. There's no movement anywhere in these pedals. They're always right there where your foot needs to find them. If I, you notice when I go into, after I do my heel and toe like this right here, my left foot's back onto the brake instead of the right foot because it's on the accelerator. And yeah, easy to find that position every time because there was no flex in the in the brake pedal or the clutch pedal moving back and forth. And it just, yeah, very accurate positioning here. So yeah, very pleased with the heel and toe here and it never gave me a problem while I was doing this. Just, yeah, I really liked them for this, for this kind of application. And of course, we have to go over to Sebring, or rather not Sebring, but uh, the ring, I meant to say. <laughs> so this, we're at the ring in Germany and obviously, this is a different configuration. I have it set up now with the big fat brake pedal because now it's all left foot braking. And this is where this fat brake pedal really comes into its own. It's really not good for the heel and toe as you saw before when I was using it. I had the thinner pedal on there. It's just not good for that uh, because it just gets in the way. And but when just all you're going to be doing is left foot braking, then yeah, this is where it really shines because it's plenty of space there. It's a very stiff plate, the stainless steel plate they're using. Um, I, I don't know about the, the grip on here. It worked fine, but I kind of like less grip on my brake pedal. It's just the feel thing. Again, totally subjective. It works fine with the, the grip on it like it is. But yeah, set up like this, I was able to spread the pedals apart. As you can see, they're probably, well, maybe because the big, the big pedal pad might not look at the same, but I've got the uh, throttle all the way over and the brake pedal all the way over on an opposing side, so there's as much space as I can get, which is typically how I run a left foot braking system, even though you don't have to. And, then, and by the way, it works fine with the little pedal pad on it too. It's just, I, I, I like the feel of that big plate underneath your foot. It gives you more confidence under braking. Uh, it just gives you a more, uh, a, a more precise feel, if you will, on exactly what the, the pedal is doing. And of course, I've got some motion here because it's, these pedals are solid. There's no, there's no bending anywhere in them, as you saw in the heel and toe when I was hammering them pretty good there. Just a very good feel, good tactile feedback. Uh, even in the left foot braking condition here, the same thing applies. 
It's just a great overall set of pedals as it comes together as a package. Again, with this heel plate. Um, yeah, without the heel plate, you know, it's going to be different because we're going to be mounting it to just profile or something else or just to some steel sheet. But yeah, this this eight millimeter heel tray just or heel plate just um, really sets these pedals up to be very successful. I would say. You know, I wish more manufacturers would take note of this kind of thing. It really matters how you mount these pedals, especially in a motion rig or just a, a static rig that's a heavy rig. Once you get into the better rigs in like a P1X or something like that, some kind of a solid profile rig, then any kind of flex in your pedals or other places really starts to show up. And, and you know, you notice it right away. You go, wow, this, you know, it doesn't feel the same as, it, as, as the rest of the chassis does. But yeah, no fear of that here and they're just doing a great job uh, again i did change my bumpers out to a black blue and orange one but yeah that's again personal preface and you can see in the picture there the orange on the bottom with the blue in the middle and black and that felt a little bit better to me instead of the way i was running it before with two blacks and a blue which i kind of thought it would but again subjective so yeah there's really not a whole lot for me to complain about here these pedals didn't do anything wrong uh, they just did everything right and that's enough for a pedal set at, at this price level i think that you know they're they're up there with other pedal sets that are very well known pedal sets and yeah they do a very good job uh, is in fact uh, better than some of the better known ones actually i think at that price point so i really like this pedal set i don't i don't see any flaws in it anywhere uh, serious flaws anyway i mean something that i could you know say well this is terrible you know this this thing broke or it bends it just doesn't do that it doesn't have any of that and yeah so <laughs> uh you guys are probably tired of hearing me prattling along about these pedal sets so i think we'll just go ahead and yeah get to the final thoughts Final thoughts on the Mecca Cup 1 Sim Racing pedals made in the Czech Republic by the guys at all for sim Here we have an all stainless steel constructed pedal set that out of the box feels like a premium kit. In hand, they give the impression that there will be no flex felt when you have them underfoot. The Mecca Cup 1s each have their own load cell, with the brake pedal load cell maxing out at 100 kilograms, which should be enough pedal force for most sim racers out there, I think. The analog to digital conversion duties are handled by the industry-proven Leo Bodner load cell amplifier board. There are nice touches to be found all around the pedal's construction. Rod ends and bronze bushings at the pivot points and laser-cut 1.4301 stainless steel plate are all top-shelf assemblies. The adjustable pedal faces look good and have enough movement in them to satisfy most position requirements. Be it heel and toe or left foot braking, this set has it covered. Offer some also offers a base plate kit for the Mecca Cup 1 pedals, and I would highly recommend that you get one if you order this pedal set. This is a massive over 16 pounds or just under 7.4 kilos, 8 millimeter thick powder coated stainless steel plate. The fact that this is what the guys at Offersim came up with demonstrates to me that they get it. If you want to get the most out of your pedal set as far as what it can deliver in feel and tactile feedback, 
you need as solid a mounting solution as you can get. With the Mecha Cup ones mounted to this plate, there is just no flex, period. The pedals feel light, yet stiff, underfoot, and allow them to feel very good right off the starting line. I use a heel and toe technique when testing pedals. This is to put as much pressure as I can on them while I'm testing them. The Mecha Cup ones allow me to get up to speed almost immediately. Not many pedal sets have been able to do that here at the SRG. Overall, as you can probably tell, the Mecha Cup 1 pedal set is one that I have no problem recommending to the sim racer looking for a new set of load cell based pedals. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.